This week you have got three reading activities. I'm going to read the text to you. If you prefer to read it by yourself, then just mute me. I promise I won't be offended. The first one is about the Queen's birthdays. Why does the Queen celebrate two birthdays? The tradition of two royal birthdays was started by George II in 1748. He was born in November and he felt that the weather would be too cold for his annual birthday parade. A solution to this was to celebrate his birthday with a military parade called Trooping the Colour held every spring. This tradition has continued ever since, no matter what month the king or queen was born. Royal facts. Name, Elizabeth Alexandra Mary. Born, 21st of April, 1926. Job, Queen Elizabeth II reigns as the Queen of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and many of the Commonwealth countries. Four, the Queen celebrates two birthdays every year, one in April and one in June. 5. Since September 2015, Her Majesty is the United Kingdom's longest reigning monarch, which is a king or queen. How is each birthday celebrated? April 21st, the Queen's actual birthday, is usually spent privately with her family and close friends and with a gun salute to publicly wish her many happy returns. On the second Saturday in June, her official birthday is celebrated with a colourful Trooping the Colour Parade from Buckingham Palace, down the Mall and finishing at Horse Guards Parade. Her Majesty is then joined on the balcony of Buckingham Palace to wave to the crowds that have gathered to wish her well. Glossary, this is what the tricky words mean. A gun salute is a mark of respect for special royal celebrations. The number of rounds or blasts depends on the place and the occasion. The basic salute is 21 rounds, but in Hyde Park and Green Park, an extra 20 rounds are added because they are royal parks. Trooping the colour. During the ceremony, the Queen inspects the troops who have paraded for her. The bands play and the soldiers march, along with horses and the regimental colour, which is the banner. It is a colourful celebration and thousands of people line the pavements of the mall to enjoy the sight. For many years the Queen rode her horse, Burmese, with her troops, but more recently she has ridden in a carriage. Okay, here are your questions. So pause the video and keep checking back at the text to make sure you've answered the questions carefully. Okay, here are the answers. Pause the video while you mark your work. Your second reading activity is about the first man on the moon. On the 20th of July 1969, an American astronaut, Neil Armstrong, became the first person to walk on the moon. An estimated 600 million people watched on television as he and crewmate Buzz Aldrin stepped onto its surface, placing their names firmly in the history books forever. Did you know a modern smartphone is several thousand times more powerful than the computers used for Apollo 11? The beginning. Neil Armstrong was born on the 5th of August 1930 in Ohio, USA. His passion for flying started at a young age. When Armstrong was age two, his parents took him to Cleveland Air Race to see aircraft up close. Four years later, his father paid for them both to ride in a plane at a local airport. It was here where he later started flying lessons, paid for himself by working after school in a pharmacy. Throughout his childhood, Armstrong spent hours on his passion. As a result, at 16 years old, he passed his pilot's license. It was before he could even drive a car. Armstrong was known for being calm and controlled in a crisis. He flew fighter planes in the Navy and later joined NASA. In September 1962, he was accepted to the astronaut corps, which would eventually lead to the ultimate test of control, 
flying all the way to the moon and landing safely. A close call. Neil Armstrong's first trip into space almost ended in a disaster. It was one of many experimental tests to see if a trip to the moon was truly possible. Armstrong, whose mission was to pilot Gemini 8 to dock with another spacecraft, felt confident despite the fact that his spacecraft was travelling at an incredible 18,000 miles per hour. Although the mission went well at first, trouble was brewing. Suddenly a warning light came on because a thruster was faulty. Consequently, Armstrong and his co-pilot started to spin uncontrollably. They were in danger of passing out. Luckily, Armstrong's quick thinking saved their lives due to the fact that he pressed the power, the button to power the backup thrusters and rescue the mission. Now he had proven himself ready to fly to the moon. Apollo 11 and the moon landing. On the 16th of July, 1969, three years and countless tests after the Gemini 8 mission, the Apollo 11 mission launched and the Saturn V rocket blasted Neil Armstrong and crewmates Edwin Buzz Aldrin and Michael Collins into space towards the moon. The journey through space took four days. After they arrived on the 20th of July, Armstrong undertook the greatest challenge of his career. The crew split up. Collins stayed in orbit around the moon doing experiments, while Armstrong and Aldrin boarded the Eagle lunar module to begin the descent to the surface. After further testing, Armstrong carefully piloted the Eagle down and avoided a large crater. Due to his excellent flying skills, they both landed safely in the Sea of Tranquility, a large crater on the moon. At nearly 11 o'clock at night on the 20th of July 1969, Armstrong stepped off the Eagle's ladder onto the moon's surface. His message travelled worldwide on Earth as radio and television broadcasts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Later life. After returning to Earth on the 24th of July 1969, Armstrong retired from being an astronaut and became a professor, sharing his expertise and passion for space with others. Neil Armstrong died on the 25th of August 2012 aged 82. And here are your questions. And then here are your answers. And your last reading comprehension activity is a poem. And it's called My Longest Journey. Winter's greeting Cheeks slapped red by the first morning's chill, throats on fire, plumes erupting with every breath. Faces hidden, friends like highwaymen in hoods and scarves. Desperate dancers, feet stamp and hands clap their reluctant beats. Colour retreats, once happy gardens wither in silent submission. Shivering trees, branches stripped bare by leaf greedy storms. Gatling gun clouds, Raindrops shower like bouncing bullets. Vampire skies draining daylight into shadows and darkness. Sledges poised, dreams of hilltops brushed cotton wool white. Crunching footsteps, forging giddy pathways through fresh snow. Carrot-nosed sentries, standing proud in every garden. Streets at war, glove-tightened grenades explode with laughter. Wasted weekends, reluctant dog walks and slow, soggy Sundays. Countdown calendar, striking days like a gloomy prisoner. Reluctant traveller, wishing the long journey would finally end. Please give me a year of spring and summer. Winter is not my friend. And here are your questions. We've got five questions this time.
and here are your answers. Hope you did well, see you later.